I wanted to talk about the other Abrahamic Semitic book, the Quran, Quran, which means reading. Um, when I was 19, I started reading the uh, King James Bible, which includes the Hebrew scriptures uh, in English, of course, and what Christians call the New Testament. When I was in my 40s, yes, I think it was 40s, maybe my 30s, I started reading um, mostly the, the Hebrew scriptures uh, in English again, of course. And when I was in my 50s, I started reading the Quran. My reason was I kept hearing so many bad things in the media. And uh, I have, you know, I had uh, plenty of uh, Muslim friends and, and even some relatives that had married into the family. And I thought, this bad stuff I'm hearing just can't be true. I mean, it's just, it's a normal major religion. So I started reading the Quran. There's all kinds of translations, just like with the Bible. Anyway, a few years ago, um, I think, yeah, I was in my late 50s. I thought I would go through the whole thing, and I thought I would put, put notes in it of the good things I found in it. I couldn't really find anything bad in it, except one thing I thought, is it possible that this verse is bad? Um, what the verse was, was don't make uh, Jews and Christians, don't take them for friends. But I thought about it in a while, or for a while, and, and I remembered what the Bible said. The Bible said, uh, whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of the Almighty. So the Bible says, don't make friends with anybody. Like, just trust the Almighty. Okay, so I'm going to go over these because it's important. In, uh, in chapter, they call this Surah, but in chapter 2, no, chapter 3, it talks about the law of the Torah and the gospel and the previous books. So it's mentioning the previous books. And then it says that the Quran was sent for the specific purpose of confirming the earlier books. It's not supposed to be a new religion. It's supposed to be a confirmation of the Abrahamic, Semitic, monotheistic re religions, which... Um, are original Judaism and original Christianity. The Jews are called righteous in the Quran. I'm going through the whole book, all my notes. And here's another one in, in Surah 4 that talks about how bad the Sabbath breakers were. Let me see, 447... O oh, people of the book, believe in what we have revealed, which confirms what, what is already with you. Be and then it talks about people who broke the Sabbath. And it, it e there's even a verse in here that the people who broke the Sabbath were turned into apes and pigs. Now, that doesn't have to be literal. I mean, the Quran uses metaphors just like the Bible does. Um, because apes and pigs don't have it in their mind to voluntarily follow the Sabbath. So, you know, don't become like them. And um, it's forbidden to, to murder, just like in the Bible. And it tells people to follow Abraham's example and obey all the laws in the Bible. It even says that the Holy Land was for the people of Moses. And it says that the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, contains the law of the Almighty. Now the term Allah, it, uh, it's repeated um 
because it was in it was in the Bible and the book of Ezra and I believe also the book of Esther the term is E L A H Ela and it just means the most high um, here's a surah in uh, chapter 5 uh, it talks about the the books uh, the former holy books contains guidance and light and that the Jews were the custodians of the writings of the Almighty and that's in Surah 5 verse 44 anyway I wanted to give an idea I mean I have I have plenty plenty of markers in here on this side and on that side so you get the idea but how many people actually obey their religion I'm talking about I'm talking about Christians and Jews and Muslims um, those are the religions that I'm particularly familiar with so I don't want to talk about the others because my knowledge base on them is not as thorough because I didn't just read the books, I went to the mosques and the churches and the synagogues. I mean, I have relatives that are Muslims, Jews, and Christians. So there's no way I would speak bad about either of them. I even have relatives that are atheists. And you know what the funny thing is? The annoying thing? That the atheist behaves the best. Why? Maybe because he was brought up by Jews, Christians, and, and Muslims. Maybe that's why. Maybe the ethics rubbed off on him. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, to say don't judge things without being experienced with them. And for a person to have a correct opinion they must have experience in what they're talking about and they must be able to verbalize the good things and the bad things about what he's talking about because if you just present one side we can't believe what you're, what you're saying well just something to think about 